Okay, the next cut is going to be Larry Lee. And he's speaking on the FBI's uh, investigation into the bombing of radio station KPFT. The date on this card is 102970. It's about 75 seconds long. Paul Levinka got the story. We're glad that the FBI has finally decided six months after the first bombing that it has statutory jurisdiction in this case. And we hope they're more serious about their statement today than they were about the uh, letters that Assistant Attorney General Will Wilson has been making to... Uh, has been sending to individual concerned citizens claiming the FBI has been in all along. This afternoon, a man in the Justice Department began confirming to the broadcast industry media, the first to receive word in this broadcasting magazine, that uh, the FBI would begin work tomorrow morning. We're very excited about that because we believe no valid investigation has been made to date, and we believe the FBI is best equipped to do so. His second number is Larry Lee. It's from an interview, phone interview J.D. did with him at Pacifica. Uh, it talks about Pacifica's being back by Christmas. This is filed the 2nd of November, approximately 40 seconds long. There are three potential antenna locations. Uh, in two of those cases, we'd be building our own 500-foot tower. In another case, we would be uh, sharing with someone else a commercial broadcasting. He's uh, courageously let us assist him. And the bearing, the wind-bearing strength of that existing tower has more to do with when we come back on than anything else. And that survey is being run, and I'll be in Washington tomorrow afternoon working at the FCC with our consulting engineer on the paperwork on that. We hope uh, we can get a very early announcement out and uh, tell people that we're coming back before Christmas. That's our aim, certainly. Run December 15th looks like a realistic date now. Now this one is uh, Larry Lee from the same interview done by J.D. Uh, regarding the use relationship with the Houston police and the Ku Klux Klan. Thursday, October 29th, police arrested two well-known members of the Ku Klux Klan who were engaged in what can only be called night riding. They were driving around before dawn with their car lights off and had in their possession three semi-automatic rifles of ammunition, a walkie-talkie, some flammable liquid, and Ku Klux Klan literature. They were arrested in a neighborhood where night riding terrorism occurs very frequently. In that same neighborhood, just this month, the Volkswagen was riddled with bullet holes. Space City, a local newspaper that is constantly subjected to terrorist harassment, is headquartered just a few blocks from where the two Klansmen were picked up. The two men who were apprehended have a long record of participation in acts of harassment against the anti-war movement and liberal and radical movements in general. They also have a long record of getting off scot free whenever they are turned over to the police or arrested. This time, the police released them after questioning. This incident, among others, raises serious questions about the relationship between the Ku Klux Klan and the Houston Police Department. The Houston Police Department is very efficient in the harassment of underground newspaper vendors, anti-war leaflet distributors, black and white radicals, and so on. But why, in the past five years, have they failed to come up with one clue about the perpetrators of literally hundreds of acts of right-wing terrorism in Houston, including the bombing of KPFT? This terrorism is well documented, and there's no excuse for the police not having taken any action against it. Perhaps a quotation from Frank Converse, Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan in Texas, will offer a clue about the one-sided behavior of the Houston Police Department. Converse was quoted this month by the Houston Chronicle as saying at a KKK rally, in these words, we have them, meaning members, in the police department, in the sheriff's department, and up in City Hall, and these people are working to build up the United Klan, unquote. The release of the two known Klan activists by the Houston Police Department after they were picked up in such compromising circumstances is one more item in the mounting evidence pointing to an adulterous relationship between the Ku Klux Klan and the Houston Police Department. The people of Houston have a right to know what is going on. We demand the full disclosure of all ties, formal or informal, between the Houston Police Department or any of its members and the Ku Klux Klan. We demand to know why the Police Department has failed to lift a finger against right-wing terrorist activity in Houston. That was Larry Lee with his uh, adulterous relationship thing, which this was read at the uh, press conference, which was held the previous Monday morning. I guess that was about the, uh, mm, that was the 1st or 2nd of November. And uh, subsequently, we filed this editorial regarding the thing. This week Monday, KPFC Radio joined with 12 other local organizations in accusing the Houston Police Department of having, quote, an adulterous relationship with the Ku Klux Klan, unquote. KPFC station manager Larry Lee was one of three moderators in a press conference 
which came to Civica Radio with such groups as the Young Socialist Alliance and the John Brown Revolutionary League. According to a statement read at the press conference, in addition to remarks made to KPRU News by Mr. Lee, Pacifica Radio, as an institution, feels that the Houston Police Department has some connection with the Ku Klux Klan. The statement did not read certain individuals in the police department or members of the Ku Klux Klan, so we must assume that the group was speaking of the police department and of the Klan also as of in institution. Whether any of these accusations are founded or unfounded, true or untrue, is not essential to the problem at hand. The very existence of Pacifica Radio at present may depend on a few more dollars here, a little more support there. Pacifica is not in any position as an institution to alienate anybody. And the basic philosophy of Pacifica does not include its taking any political stand. Two, Pacifica has received little cooperation with any law enforcement agency in investigation of the bombing. But does Mr. Lee feel that Pacifica will reap the greater cooperation of police chief Herman Short by claiming that his organization is having an adulterous relationship with the Klan? Or does KPFT hope to enlist the greater support of the likes of the Houston Post and Congressman Eckhart by institutionally linking itself with the John Brown Revolutionary League? For the good of Houston, Pacifica must be returned to the air. But last Monday's press conference did not get it any nearer to its destination. Paul Levinka, KPRU News. That was filed the 4th of November. It's a minute and 30 seconds long. The next story is Larry Lee on the FBI. It was filed by Johnny Bujak on the 12th of November. Number is M25. Do you think it's only for the FBI to say? I think that uh, if the reward were larger, the arrest would be quicker. I really do. Money talks. There are more people who know who blew up the station than the people who did it, and that's the key that we've got to work with. There's a statute of limitations that's pretty long-term in these federal cases. There's a hard-working group of FBI agents. There's a large body of federal law, and there's certainly public outcry for the arrest. The FBI is genuinely working the case hard because although we received, you know, the sheriff's office kept telling us again and again what they were doing and they were talking up their sleeves, but the FBI has taken us deeply into its confidence in the way the investigation is proceeding, and it really makes me hopeful that they're going to come up with something. If they don't, it won't be for lack of trying, I'll tell you that. Not in the case of the FBI. The agents here and their leader, Tom Jordan, the agent in charge, have been with Pacifica since the first, since May 12th. It was only uh, a bureaucrat in Washington that kept them from applying their common sense and their skills all along. The next one is also Larry Lee. Both of these were filed after a meeting of Pacifica members last Thursday night, the 12th. Johnny Bujek has this one. It was filed on 11-12, and this is M26. It's dire, but it's, it's improving. It's always dire. It's an expensive project. You know, it's not, uh, it's not as cheap to do as a, a concert hall or an underground paper or something like that. It takes a great deal of money. We try to spend it very efficiently and to realize it reaches a great many people. It's going to cost $180,000 and operating, including deficits, over the year and a half it takes to reach total listener support. Our board of directors, soliciting foundations and rich people already have gotten 61,000 of that. And we're hopeful that the public will join us in the weeks ahead in the Buxby Bombs campaign and then in the weeks that follow in the subscription drive to make Pacifica really a part of the community.